I wanted us to compile a list of our top five favorite black shows of all time. And I'm going to start this out by letting us all do number five, and then we'll discuss it. So, Larry, what is number five on your list? Oh, man, let me pull up my list. See, because this, this was this was a really, really hard list for me to make, right? Because mm. I had my I had my my top five that were my favorites. But then I also had a, a, a whole bunch of other movies that were on that list that I thought were should be on the list because they were very important movies, you right. know? Like they were important for the time, and and my my one two three four five. This this now this movie. I'm not sure if you consider it a black movie or not. Like when you said, "What are your favorite black movies?" I wasn't quite sure. Like what qualifies something as a black movie? Is it because it's made by a black director, or because it's got black actors, or because it's a black story, or does it have to have all of those elements? I wasn't sure. It but, needs to, it needs to have a little bit of all of those elements. Well, number five on my list, I think is actually missing, you know, I think it's actually missing the elements, except it's, it has black actors. It's about a black, it's a black story and it's glory. Okay. So, okay. Denzel, right? Denzel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Denzel, that's when he won his first Oscar for best supporting. And, and that is, that is my number five on the list. I absolutely love that movie. I can watch that movie over and over and over again. It is fantastic. One of my uh, one of my professors from grad school uh, was the sound designer on that movie. I believe he won an Oscar for that one as well. He is the first. He's actually the first black person to ever win multiple Oscars. His name's Russell Williams. So if you don't know, recognize. And uh, okay. So cool. be I Avery. Try and get him on the show, man. You should. You yeah. should. Be no, Avery. What's good. number five good. on your list? Number five for me on my list, it may be a bit controversial, but I mean, it is what it is. And that's what I got right here. So unrated version. Yes. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm just joking. Well, I was going to say, please <laughs> explain. Yeah, I was going to have to get asked for that. You're going to have to explain that with like me. Class, yeah, show yeah. your work. <laughs> but we're talking, it's right, it's right, right here. Uh, the best man. Best uh, man. Okay. Best man. This okay. is one of my favorites right here. I can watch this movie over and over and over again. Okay. Um, I mean, it it was. I mean, there's nothing I can complain about. You know what I'm saying? Um, I loved every character. I loved every motivation, the growth, mm -hmm. uh, the the breakups, the makeups. Uh, you know everything. It, it was a lot of challenging thing. A lot, a lot of relationships, uh, friends and romantic were challenged in this movie. Um, and I just think it really speaks to our culture a ton. I, I, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Hey, right. I, I can roll with that one. I can, I can get down with that. I can get down with that. So now y'all might pick on my number five, but it shows, my age, shows my age a little bit. And <laughs> it, it had to be number five on my list. And I'll explain to you why, but here it is. House Party, <laughs> the first one. All right, all the, right. The, that's a fun the, movie. The I'm pretty very, sure we all was going to have that, you know. That's the very so. first one, so... <laughs> I was, a wee, I was a wee lad when that movie came out, right? And, you know, <laughs> I wasn't supposed to watch that movie. But when my mama what? would leave, I would sneak in the room, find the <laughs> tape, slip it on in there, and, Lord, they had sex in that movie. Oh, my yeah. God, Lord, Ooh. they had sex. And they had raps. So for the longest time, people thought I could rap because I had memorized the raps Kid and Play was doing in that uh, movie, but yeah. I would put my own words into it, right? Okay. And I'm like, I'm like in the third grade or whatever. These people yeah. think I can actually rap. And so right. for me, this was a cornerstone movie because this was the first black movie I ever seen that had, you know, two black people in it. And the movie was based around a whole entire black cast. Honorable right. mention for me would have been a movie by Richard Pryor called Which Way Is Up. But that's not necessarily yeah. a black movie. He was the star of the movie, but it wasn't necessarily a black movie. So that's right. why House Party became my number five because it was the first all black cast. It was my introduction into movies and our culture. So that's why it's number five for me. Larry, no. what's your number four? My number four, if you're talking about showing your age, here we go. My number four is Hollywood Shuffle. Oh, wow. Man. Yeah. Woo I love that Poo. movie. This, this is, I, first of all, I love, I love this movie. And I also think this movie is very, very important to black filmmaking. 
because mm -hmm. this is one of those movies when brothers out there could not, not just brothers, but brothers, sisters, everyone, they could not get jobs, when they could not get decent roles. Robert Townsend and them went out there and they maxed out people's credit cards. They they did guerrilla filmmaking where they were out in LA filming in alleys at night and all kinds of times of the day without permits. The story behind them making this movie is fascinating. And it's a hilarious movie. The, the 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 overall theme of the movie is fantastic. That last scene that they talk about where they say there's always work at the post office is just it is it's so much deeper than just what it sounds like. And it's a fan, it's just a fantastic movie that's funny. It pokes fun at a lot of the Hollywood stereotypes. It pokes fun at a lot of the of uh, uh, black stereotypes. It's just if you haven't, if you have not seen Hollywood Shuffle, go check it out. It's sort of a cult classic at this point, and it's hilarious. Okay, be Avery, right. it's on you now. All right, uh, my number four. It's in a little. I, I gotta hide it, but I don't know if y'all can see that. Set it off. Set it off. Hey, it off. Hey, yeah. hey, yeah. hey, yeah, hey! I got that. All right, all right. Right. But yeah, man, set it off. Dope ass movie. Um, I love the four women that was in this right here. And while I do, uh, while I do feel that you know everybody can somewhat improve their own personal situation, uh, with people that look like us is quite different. And you got that perspective from these four women right here, to where you know when they're doing all they can, but uh, you know because of their situation, they're just kind of forced into this life of crime. Unfortunately, you know mm -hmm. some people may frown upon that, but they just didn't really have that many options, you know. And I remember right. seeing that movie when I was a child and also just as an adult. And, uh, you know, it, it just really hits me right here. And, um, you know, it, it's just some of the stuff that went on in that movie in the mid nineties is still happening today, unfortunately. And uh, yeah. I don't know, it just speaks volumes to me and uh, I can relate to a lot or, or I know a lot of people that can relate to them in that movie. And um, that's just one, why it's one of my favorites. Right. Hey, I'm with that brother. That, yeah. That's a good one. So yeah. what he has as his number four kind of goes in line with my number four. Y'all y'all remember this one right here. This is my number four movie, oh, New Jack yeah. City. Yeah. New, right. <laughs> it, it was a New Jack swing back when I, I was like a kid. It. I was like that 12. Is, that's on my honorable mention list. That's on one of my lists as, as, as one of the important movies, I think. It, it was but. important. It, it, like, I was 11 years old. This was kind of sort of right around the Rodney King thing, right? Where we had seen injustice. They vilified black people, which they still do that to this day. And I can remember Nino Brown being the first, I guess, bad guy, if you want to call him that, that I was actually rooting for. I was rooting right. for him. But I was also rooting for Ice-T's character. And this movie, it had every element you want from a crime boss movie. Sex drugs, um, shootouts, great lines. It had it all, and I was there for all of it. New Jack City, I could watch That's it so any time of the day and could watch it right now. That movie scared me when I was a little kid, man, because when it came <laughs> out, I was like six or seven years old, and mm -hmm. I think this was the first movie where I saw like, you know, like gun violence or right. people mm -hmm. getting shot up. So that scene on the steps uh, or whatever, Ooh. where like the caterers came, that was like my introduction to like violence in movies or whatever, just seeing somebody getting shot up and it like kind of scarred me for a while. But um, right. I love it now, you know, I was I was afraid of it then, but you know, <laughs> it's a pretty dope yeah, movie. Yeah, I, I love that movie. I, I love that scene when they were all around the table. Up, and my, my brother's keeper. Yeah, man. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> it, it had so many lines in it. What about the yeah. line where he told homeboy, sit your $5 ass down before I make change? Oh, my, change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. And not to mention that, ladies and gentlemen, but the New Jack soundtrack was bananas. I wound up yeah. getting that CD, and that was one of the first movies I ever got a soundtrack for, and I loved it. So, And Set It Off had a great soundtrack, too, speak, even though we passed that one. It had a great soundtrack, too. So, Larry, yeah. give us your number four. My number four is a more recent one, and that is Straight Out of Compton. Okay. okay. That one is a fantastic movie. It is, I, 
you know, that's one of those movies I wish they had. A, is that your number three? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I wish, I wish, I wish the Academy had a category for ensemble cast because I think that would have won if they had a category for them because they were so good. But because they were this this ensemble, I don't think anybody was going to stand out as as a best actor for say. But to get if they had a, if they had a category for that, they would have won it. That was that was one of the best movies I've seen in a very 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 long time. And and. Yeah, I was, and what's his name? You know, part of it is, you know, some people may say, yeah, it's like cheating because he looks so much like his dad, but he really did the work to to look like his dad. He was a really good actor, uh, you know, uh, Ice Cube's son, I forgot his yeah. name, um, O'Shea Jackson Jr. Right, right. And, uh, you know, but he, he, it wasn't like he just said, okay, that's my dad, I look like him, put me in the movie. He, you could tell he really did the work to, you know, and, all in all, it was just a fantastic film. It really was. I just I was really hoping that they would have been recognized more broadly, at, you know, at the Oscars. But you know, I said this how that's how stuff happens. So yeah, yeah. B. Avery, is that really your number three? No, it is not my number three. <laughs> but I had it here because it is an honorable mention. Like before we went on live, I couldn't decide, and you know, it didn't make the cut. However, my number three is, and I can't believe I don't have a copy of it. But that's 1991, 1991 John Singleton, Boys in the Hood. Boys oh, in the yeah. Hood. Yeah, that's oh, on my, yeah. my album mention list, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, one of the reasons why I love that film, and it kind of just ties into, like, set it off, is, I mean, you know, you do have your people in your neighborhood that's, you know, in our community that's, you know, probably not going to go anywhere, um, you know, for a number of reasons. But then you still have those two gems in there, you know, Cuba Gooden Jr.'s character or uh, Ricky, they're mm -hmm. you know, try to do great, but they just can't because of the situation they're in. And it was, right. I think it was one line in the movie from, uh, not Morris Chestnut, but Lawrence Fishburne, when he was trying to talk to the community or whatever, you know, about gun violence. And one character was like, hey, man, what am I, what am I supposed to do? Everybody else got a gun around me. I'm not supposed to have a gun. And I, if they're going to smoke me, I'm going to smoke them back or smoke them too or something like that. You know, I can't right. I don't remember the line verbatim. I think y'all know what I'm talking about. But yeah. again, this is another film that speaks volumes. I mean, you know, it still breaks my heart when Ricky gets shot in the back. Mm. You know, cause he had the whole world in front of him, and it was just taken away off stupidity. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. unfortunately, that happens sometimes. Um, so yeah, I mean, that that's that would always be top notch for me, right? That's a classic, classic film. Not yeah, not, not just in black movies, but period. It's just a classic. Yeah. Right. Right. I right. loved I loved that movie and I think that movie it made it didn't make my top 5 but it's on my list here because I think it's such an important film because yeah. it was one it's John Singleton's first film that he came out and for those of you who don't know that movie was actually his thesis film at you know when he was at USC film school. Oh, really? So he was working on that project and I believe it was Steven Spielberg who saw who saw uh you know a a scene I think they had to shoot a scene of it and then he started working with them. And so it was, it started off as his thesis project, but um, it, I thought that was such an important film because what it did, at least for what I felt it did, it's, it showed Hollywood, there's a, there is a crop of young black filmmakers that are coming up that are not Spike Lee, you know, that are going to make all these great films. If you give them the space to tell these stories, they are going to tell wonderful stories and they're going to make you a lot of money in the interim, you know, right. or in the process. And and I feel like they did. I feel like that 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 John Singleton, you know, and that story allowed for other filmmakers to come up. And you started to see you started to see like the Anton Fuqua's and and um, and the F. Gary Gray's, yep. and you start to get films like Menace to Society and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. You really start to get some great films that came out after that. And I think that when you had someone like John Singleton that was able to to sort of kick in the door and say, "Look, we don't have to be." you can give us more than just having us do sort of, you know, Dolomite, you know, black exploitation movies, or we don't have to just be just movies about black people that only black people want to watch. We can make movies about black people that everybody wants to watch. Right, right. And, right. you know, and I think that, I think that really, for lack of a better phrase, set it off, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you hit the nail on the head with that one, bro. You did. Yep. And, and which, Brings me to number three when you mentioned uh, movies that everyone can watch. 
that become cult classes, not just with black people, but with all people. I think probably one of the most watched comedies that white people love that is a black production is this thing right here. It's Friday. Oh, yeah. It's, it's Friday, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It is Friday. When when you say Felicia, everybody know what you're talking about. When, when you say Craig and Day Day, everybody know what you're talking about. Man, how you get fried on your day off? Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. and, and ladies and gentlemen, this thing had an all-star cast. Chris Tucker, John Witherspoon, Ice Cube, um, uh, Zeus. It, you, you just had Nia Long. You had a outstanding cast, yeah. and they mirrored this thing together. I don't, I don't see how they shouldn't have had some kind of Oscar nomination for at least comedy. Because the movie was pretty funny, yeah, it had funny. a it, it had a classic theme, and it basically was the backstory. To one of the themes was overcoming a bully, right? Yeah, <laughs> it, and, yeah. and it overcame the bully, and it showed you what happens when you stand up to the bully. It showed you what was going on in our communities and just the different things that we was dealing with, living during that time. Had to have it on my list. You really, got really, knocked up. That oh. out. Yeah. I mean, this thing had classic lines. I had to have it. That's my number three. Keep posting your comments on what you guys think. Larry, we get into the we get into the end now, baby. What's your number two? My number two is one that if you have not seen this movie, I recommend that you go right after this show is over. Whatever you were planning on doing, go watch it. And that is City of God. Yes, it's a foreign film from Brazil. Bro. City of God is City yeah. of God is one of the best movies ever made. Bro. One of the best movies I ever made. I forgot about that movie. Have you Man. seen it? Yeah, you said part. best movie ever made. One of the it's one of the best movies. Like like if I here's here's how good this movie is. I put this on my list as one of my favorite black movies. But if I was just making a list of my favorite movies, it would still be on that list. It it's is so very bad. good. Have you heard of it, Lamont? No, nah, that's my first time hearing of it. I, my wow. one of my roommates introduced it to me in 2004, and it's, it's pretty cold, man. Like, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't mean to steal your fire, Larry, but it, it just yeah. it's an amazing film. Like, you got all these people running around just thinking they just the hardest in the paint, hardest in the street, but they don't got nothing on yeah. the kids that are in this movie right here. Nothing. I mean. Yeah. These are true. I I, I don't want to use. Well, it, it's it's. They're it not even. Weird. You don't call them gangsters. These are survivors. Bro, these are oh. kids that live in the favelas. There. I mean, these kids are hard because they have to be. You right. know? No, no choice, man. We're talking babies, man. You know, and it, it, it's it's sad. It's a lot of things, man. You got your emotions are gonna. You're gonna feel the whole spectrum of full spectrum of emotions when you watch this right here because yeah it's, it's pretty tough it's pretty it's tough. a beautiful movie too it I'm really gonna is. To watch it i'm gonna have to watch it and give y'all a report back on i'll try to watch it this weekend because hell what else am i gonna do sit around up all night with the baby that's what's gonna happen <laughs> so i gotta do something <laughs> be, how be, are they quarter that belly man i forgot about belly Larry, um, it's, it's so man. many it's so many man. Out there, man. Yeah. belly belly should be somewhere on the list but um, belly, belly should be on a list somewhere, but Belly would be on a list if we were making a, a list of top five cult classics. Belly's yeah. on that list. Yeah. Belly is on that list. So B Avery, what yeah. is your number two? Well, well, I'm gonna be honest with you. It was Friday. Oh. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was Friday. However, I'm gonna just I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in an honorable mention kind of and, and swap it out with my number two if that's okay. That's fine. And then, this one came out in 1999, written and directed by Rick Famayua, and that's The Wood, with okay. uh, Tay Diggs, okay. Omar Epps, and um, you know all of them good people right there. Um, one another again, one of my favorite movies. Uh, I, dude is in California. I think my favorite line is when uh, a scene is when he's in the uh, living room trying to dance with the bear, and his mom <laughs> comes in there and catches him or, or whatever. I mean, uh, the the whole thing is because. <laughs> What do you what, this this I, I saw this in 1999, right? Uh I was th I was 13 or 14 years old. So that's right there at that age to where you know people are you know having sex for the first time. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. 
So given the content in the movie, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like, is this how it's going to be? You know, I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it on the condom and she's like, is it supposed to look like that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, bro, it, it, I mean, like being nervous about the first dance. I remember the first party I went to, like where it was actually real dancing. Yeah. You know, like, I was, I was, I was terrified. I was scared out of my life. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, I'm, I'm at the age as I'm watching this movie right here, man. And it's, um, I thought I had it. I thought I brought it with me, but I guess I didn't. But yeah, the word right. number two. Ooh. It's a dope movie right there for me. All right. Be, be able, I'm with you, man, because. The the same the same feelings and emotion you had from that is what <laughs> house party did for me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> like no, I got yeah. my dad steps. Learned, yeah. You remember in house party they was putting on condoms and he had a raggedy ass condom that was Bro. expired and yeah. all of that. <laughs> all right. and I went through the same thing. I went through the same exact thing. Bro. That was it. Yeah. 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 So and okay, I, and so. one more one more tidbit. Yeah, yeah. Go, go I took I took um one of my uh, my junior high high school crush with me. Like my mom dropped us off at the movie or whatever. We went to Six Flags first as a group. Then we all went to go see that. And so it was just, it was a real true experience for me that I can, uh, you know, be able to tell my grandchildren about someday. So, you know. That's dope. Yeah. Hey, Lamar, right. we're gonna have to, you got to let us go through our honorable mention list real quick after we finish our top five. Yeah, you get yeah. two, you get two honorable mentions. Two. Okay. Because oh, two. Three. Two. Three. Two. Three. Three. I don't want to name them okay. all. I'm going to go through my list. Yo, man, three. All. three. 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 And that's it. Three. You got to learn to limit yourself. You get three. I know so, y'all not gonna, I know y'all not going to pick mine either, but that's so, so, so just to make y'all mad, <laughs> my, my number two has two. It's tied for two because the, the same actor is the star of both movies. So y'all should already know. What I'm about to say, because we have not mentioned this man's name, but he's a legend. I know who it is. I know who it is. It's, it's my folk, Eddie Murphy. I know, it. I know it. Boomerang okay. and Coming to America right. are tied for me for number two on the list. I could watch both of those movies right now. I would even beg to say that you might could say Coming to America is an all-time great but I also feel like you yeah. might could say that about Boomerang being a romantic comedy is an all-time great. And one thing that stood out for me, my favorite male quartet was on the Boomerang soundtrack, and I got introduced to them by that, Boys to Men. I got introduced right. to Tony Braxton via Boomerang. I got introduced to Robin Gibbons. I got introduced to Strong J. I got introduced to um, Holly Berry, <laughs> <laughs> Grace, Jones. Grace Jones. Yeah, yeah. I still I call her Strong J to this day. She'll never be Grace Jones to me. She's gonna Man. always be Strong J. You know what's funny is that most people, when they talk about Grace Jones, they don't realize Grace Jones was a supermodel before she started acting. And if you right. look up some of the old Grace Jones, I mean, she was beautiful in her Strong J days. But if you look her up mm -hmm. earlier, man, she was just. She was she, she was right. Absolutely she, she was striking in, in all of the best ways. Yeah. But boom boomerang had to make it and coming to America. What can I say, ladies and gentlemen? It's a foundational classic. Yeah. It's it's, yeah. it's a foundational Bro. classic. You we can as black people can go somewhere and recite lines from coming to America, and we know exactly what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And they're getting ready to come out with part two. And so I um, Glow. Yeah, man. So that's so glow. This is embarrassing. McDougal's. We eating at McDonald's. We eating at McDougal's. And yes, then, sir. then you had the woman that was at the hockey game. He kept saying, "In the face." <laughs> <laughs> Sexual chocolate. <laughs> Sexual chocolate. Don't forget that. <laughs> Drop the mic. Sexual oh my chocolate. god! And not and Larry. Not to mention all the stars. That was in um, Coming to America. Eric yeah, LaSalle. Yeah. You had the dad from Good Times. You had John Samuel. Amos. You John. You had Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. I mean, you had star on top of star in that yeah. movie. So Eddie Murphy connected the two. That's why they made my number two. But ladies and gentlemen, we're to our number one. Our number one, Larry. You what's your number one? My number one is a movie I have seen more times than oh, I've probably boy. seen any other movie. 
And that is the life and times of Killmonger, otherwise known as Black Panther. Oh God, let, let me let me give let me give Larry what he wanted people to hear. Because that's all he wants. Here you go. This is for Larry. Burn all that. My king, we cannot do that. It is our tradition. When I tell you to do something, I mean that shit. Burn it all. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's the best right there, man. That's the best. <laughs> finish, finish it off, Larry. Why did that make your number one? Man, you know, anytime, anytime you have, you see a movie that sort of moves the, the the cultural needle, it's like it has to be on the it has to be on your list. And and on top of that, it was just so entertaining. Mm -hmm. It was so much fun. It was so entertaining. I mean, I. I have watched movies over and over again, but I think I went and saw that movie. I think I probably saw that movie 12 times in the theater. I just kept going back and back and back. And I, I, you know, I mean, I saw it a few times by myself. I saw it with my wife, I think twice. I took my niece to go see it like two, three times. I saw it with some friends. Anytime somebody was like, we're going to see Black Panther. I was like, cool, I'm there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I mean, I love that movie. I mean everything from everything from the Dora Milaje to to to, Jury, to to Suri and 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 Killmonger was my favorite. All of it. I mean, I I love that. I love that movie, man. Yeah. I love that movie. I, I I mean it is it is a it is a it is a classic right now. Even though it's current, it's still a classic, and it's even even though it's a very current movie, you know, it just is. So. Mm -hmm. I love it. So on you, B. Avery, yes. big moment. Number one. Well, to be honest with you, man, you took the fire from me. It was coming to America. Oh! oh. It to, uh, on DVD. It was coming to America for all the same reasons. <laughs> However, I'm going to give the viewers a little something else to gush on. So okay. I'm going to speak up. And that is, uh, came out two years ago, Spike Lee, and that's Blast Klansman. Oh, right? yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bro, All right. This movie was just so cold to me. I mean, I think I saw this twice in the theater. Uh, came out, the, ran out the movie theater, threw up a little review on Facebook just with words, man. Because what Spike Lee was able to do with that is take a serious topic about like racism, white supremacy, but also infuse a lot of jokes in the movie, too. Or whatever to make it like comical and not just like where you leave in the theater depressed or something like that. I mean, maybe right. something, but you know, I, I, I still, I, it's a, based on the crazy, outrageous, true story. And it, you know, it, it, for him to be able to put all those elements in one movie and make it work, um, is just like you know, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the my two favorite scenes in the movie was, uh, I think it was, um, was it Belafonte, um, uh, where he was giving the speech at the end. And um, I, I may have been mixing up one of our great leaders, but it was it was like a montage going from like the black power speech to like the white power. And it was going back and mm. forth or whatever. I love I that. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And also uh, one with uh, I mean, this was the debut for John David Washington for me and I think for everybody else. But when he was speaking with um, I forgot the black lady's name. Um, she was in the Spider-Man movies. They were just going up a hill and they were just talking about how. It's actually how me and you, L L Lamont, met or started talking or conversing is how black people have like two, con like double consciousness. Right. right. Now we, we have our black self, how we're more of ourself around um, um, uh, amongst each other. But then when we're out in society, the predominant, you know, dominant society, we have the code switch. And, right. you know, how that can play on our minds. And that just kind of, I, I, I just remember seeing it in the movie and just be like, whoa, they're really, you know, hitting this right here. You know what I'm saying? This is really speaking to me. So. Blast Clampman, one of my favorites. Hey, but. I I love that movie too, man. Um, I saw it in the movie theater. I saw it at home. I was I kind of done that one the way Larry did Black Panther. I was trying to show more and more people that movie because for whatever the reason, it kind of went under the radar, if you can say that. Um, yeah. But but it's real. It was really a well done movie, like you said. Yeah. You got a chance to see um Mr. Washington, and yeah. he he. He he done his thing, man. I yeah. liked the movie. I thought yeah. it was good. It was and perfect. So, yeah. Yep. So that brings me to my number one, my number one movie, and you guys should know me by now. It Here should be go. no question. Here we go. 
with my number one movie. I hate to do it, but it's true too. Yeah, go ahead and burn all that. My king, we cannot do that. It is our tradition. <laughs> when I tell you to do something, I mean that shit. Burn it I all. I mean that shit. There you go, the life and times of, of Killmonger. Mm -hmm. So now th this movie was groundbreaking and it won an Oscar. So you have to say in your list of greatest movies all time, somewhere in there, Black Panther is there. Yeah. Because they was able to take something that you're not supposed to be able to do, which a superhero movie, and add enough context, enough elements to the storyline to make it a household classic for everyone. Yeah. First black movie to crack a billion dollars. Uh, yeah. First you had white movie. kids running around talking about they want to be Black Panther. You I, know? Was about say, I was about to say, <laughs> one, of the, one of the probably four or five handful of black movies that had white culture saying things like, I'm from Wakanda. You know, right. kind of like in the same vein of Friday, because that was another cult classic for whites. Right. This movie crossed all kinds of intersections. It told our story in all its glory, the way it can be told. It didn't have any of that janky promoters feel to it. It was right. a well done story, done within the story arc and the continuity of a bigger narrative, which was Marvel. So it right. had to be number one for me. I loved it. Um, T'Challa knocked it out the park. He showed you why you don't have to worry about dealing with killmongers because he was not the king of the world. He was the king of Wakanda. And <laughs> it done my heart. He well. liberator. Having said that, I did like the Killmonger thing because they've got <laughs> iconic lines in there. Bury me in the ocean because my ancestors knew that dying in the ocean was better than being chained and bonded. Loved it, can't do any better. So I'm yeah. with you on that one, Larry. But Larry, give us your top three honorable mentions. All right, my top three honorable mentions, man. This one, this is hard because there's there's some there's some there's some there's some on this list that I really want to. Can I do my top four? Top four. <laughs> Go for top right, four. Let me give you four. So my top one is one that I just watched just this week that I absolutely love. As soon as I watched it, it instantly shot to the top of my list, and that is the Last Black Man in San Francisco. Oh, I can still see that. Man, I thought that was just one of the most beautiful movies I have seen. It was just, I that mean, down. that you, watching now, that movie. You, you said The Last Black Man in San Francisco? Yes. Came out like that a year ago, right? so good. And it is, it's just so good. It's so well constructed. And it, it's sort of like um, watching that movie as a black man in America. It is like, it's like, have you ever, have you ever had, some sort of infection and your doctor gives you antibiotics because you have like an ear infection or a sore throat or something and you take your antibiotics and you wake up the next day and you feel good. You're like, oh, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go play. And your parents are like, no, you got to stay in for a little bit longer, but you feel really good. That's how I felt after watching that movie. It felt like I just took some really good medicine and felt great afterwards. It, I mean, I love that movie. It was, it, it hmm. It would have been on my top five list, but I was like, I feel like I need to watch it a few more times before I before it gets elevated there because I just watched it this week. But I, man, that movie was so good. I I really enjoyed that. All right, my next one, my next honorable mention, which you guys are probably gonna laugh at me, but I love this movie, is Under the Cherry Moon. I love that movie with Prince. Probably we laugh, movie. man. This is this is your top. This is your list. Ain't nobody laughing at your list. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie, man. There's so many funny scenes in there with him and Jerome, and that in that scene where they're in the they're in that restaurant with the lady, the little uppity sedity lady, and he wrote on the napkin, uh, you know, um, Rekka Stowe, and he she said, "Where do you go if you want to buy Sam Cook Abbott?" And she was like, "What are you talking? Where do you go if you want to buy Sam Cook Abbott? The Rekka Stowe." <laughs> <laughs> Oh my lord! Have yeah. I'm so happy because you're happy, <laughs> right? <laughs> that movie was hilarious, man, and I love the fact they shot it in black and white. It was just, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it thoroughly. All right, okay. 
So my third one, and this is not a genre I'm particularly fond of, but the movie was so good and it. I think it really opened up the eyes to, to Hollywood again is Get Out. I think Get okay. Out was just a mm-hmm. pivotal film for black filmmakers. I think for Hollywood in general, I think really what it did is showed Hollywood you can allow black people to make great movies and tell great stories that don't have to be what you think they should be. They can You just give them the money and let them go do their thing and they will bring back genius. And yeah. it wasn't even a lot of money to make either, which is great too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So right. that was one. I'm not the biggest horror fan or scary movie fan, but I watched it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was terrifying in a lot of ways, but I think that I think even so much. I mean, it was a great movie, and even more important, I think it was. I think it was an important movie because of what that movie did. You know, as far as opening things up to for people, I think that movie is going to allow a lot of other filmmakers, a lot of other black filmmakers, to make movies that maybe they wouldn't have otherwise been been able to have the freedom to make. So I think it opened up a whole new space for black filmmakers. All right, I guess this one would be my number four, and this one is another one that I think is it was a really great movie for me at that time, and it was also I think another important movie because of what it was, which was School Days. And okay. so, and that was because in, and, you know, growing up, you often, you saw, you saw a lot of the white college movies, the white fraternity movies. You got to mm. see all the stuff like, like, like Porky's and, and, uh, what's the other one with Belushi? Um, um, oh man, the one with the, let me dance with Joe date. What was the name of that? What was the one, one with, with anyways, whatever that one was, I can't remember that, that old movie, but this was a black college experience movie. And I, I think it I think it, it allowed a lot of young black folks that maybe didn't have college, you know, on their mind, the opportunity to look at this and say, holy crap, this is what black folks can do. Mm-hmm. We can go to college and we can be in fraternities and we can be in sororities and we can go out there and party and have fun on college in college and get an education. And and it was it was along those same, it was on that, it was sort of in that same era, I felt like, where the Cosby era was coming up, where you were showing stories of successful black people. But I think this movie showed, I mean, you showed the successful black people, but you showed so many different elements of the black community and all the things we deal with as far as, you know, colorism and and poverty. And you showed, you had people in there that were sort of like the hippie, earthy granola people that wanted to save the world. You have the other people that just want to be like the power players and take over everything. You really had what I think of as a, a true representation of what the black community is. It has a little bit of everything. And they really showed that in such a way that really, that told a great story. So Mm-hmm. School Days is definitely on my list. You know, it's an honorable mention, but it's definitely on my list. Really? All right. Time for you, B. Avery. Yes, Your sir. Four honorable mentions. Yes, sir. And and biting off the last little sentiment that you made, Mr. Larry, of a true representation of bl- like the black community. Uh, my, my first one is going to be, I think it came out of 95, Soul Food. Okay. Um, because I think that is like the perfect representation of the black family, or it, it can be. I love big families. Uh, I come from a big family. My, uh, I don't know too much on my mom's side, but my dad's side, he was uh, part of, uh, it was eight of them. So four boys, four girls, and wow. all of them had a ton of kids too. So just going over to Big Mama's house, because we called her Big Mama too, and just for Thanksgiving, <laughs> whatever. I mean, that, that food, it was it was just the highlight of life. You know what I'm saying? Right. It, it just went down, <laughs> you know? And it was just always a good time, you know? And even if we did bump heads with our cousins, our aunties, our uncles, five minutes later, we were still tripping out playing guts or a card game or something like that. But while we while they had all the love in the family, it still showed that like we're all human and we still fight and bicker because there was problems in that family too, um, you know, levels to it or whatever. But you know, we all have we all have the, those members in our family that's just like, uh, oh, what's going on? You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's make more choices. So you just, that reflection on screen and you're just able to relate. I don't know, just a favorite. Oh, and, and my favorite line, it just, it's so true. 
like these five fingers right here are, are not much by themselves, but if you ball them up into mm -hmm. one body, you're gonna have <laughs> that is come on, man. You already know yeah. what with that, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. let's go ahead and make this fist, you know. <laughs> knowledge. So I, I love that movie. Now the the remainder, I'm just list these off right back to back because they're still in the same vein. I love all these. That's the temptations, oh. the heart beats. Oh, five, the American dream. Uh, oh. I mean, <laughs> man, can nobody sing like Eddie Kane? Oh, man, like, I don't, I don't care what you're doing if you're flipping the channels. Oh. And like either one of those, or the five heartbeats, or I'm Decker Ruffin. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're gonna stop. You're gonna stop and watch it. It's I, I don't know which one is my favorite out of all three of those, but I mean, Fair. black making music, man, and just like the rise and fall story, all those three, five heartbeats, temptations, and the Jackson Five American Dream. You know, they're, they're perfect. So you know, <laughs> top five. Yeah, those are solid picks. Those yeah. are some solid. I like that, uh, man. <laughs> legends. I, I mean, yeah. legends. Legendary. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and rattle off all mine because I can pretty much explain them together and what they meant to me and why I feel like this should be my honor of mention. <laughs> so first and foremost, Harlem Nights. Great movie. <laughs> they put together an outstanding cast of comedians in that movie. Um, Sunshine. Yeah, hey, that's the iconic <laughs> line. That thing so right, you throw it in the air, it turned to sunshine, boy. And I said to myself, I don't never want no P-U-S-S-Y like that, ever. I ain't trying to be addicted. He got on the phone and said, baby, I'm never coming home. Never, <laughs> never. And I was like, I don't want none. So 